So the loudest? Nothing for spitting my gum out at the last second? All right. But last night, folks, I mean, I saw the loudest, rudest people dressed in crazy clothes, screaming and yelling, disturbing the peace. Some of the women were almost naked. The guys were dressed like they wanted to be Che Guevara or something. They were all screaming things that were so un-American. You know what? That's the last time I watched the Latin Grammys. I'm not kidding, folks. <laughs> folks, that was a good one. Damn it. <laughs> Dick Cheney's speech. He got a laugh stealing Giuliani's joke. Did you see that about the two Americas and John Kerry flip-flopping? Giuliani did the joke two nights before. This son of a bitch stole it, rewrote it, and put it out there and got a laugh. I mean, don't get me wrong, he stole it better with his natural charisma, but I think the, uh, I think the Republicans came off good, and that's even with Pataki's Hitler haircut. Holy mother! Who cuts his hair? Schwarzenegger's Uncle Heinrich? He looks like, he looks like Marilyn Manson with that cut, actually. I wish it was from the side, but... Now, over here, we have the Bush girls in front of a French flag. I don't know why, but, uh... The Bush girls from the other night, uh, their jokes were not good. They wrote, you know, the, the outcast joke, it didn't really work. So I rewrote the jokes for them. They got a couple of good ones, because they were trying to say, like, Grandma's not hip. Here's the way you do it next time, ladies. Grandma's great, Barbara Bush, but she's not hip, folks. She thinks the Wu-Tang Clan is the name of the dish that Grandpa threw up on at that Japanese state dinner. <laughs> That's a good one, I know. How do I do it, folks? I don't know. How do I do it every day? It baffles me even more. And then, uh, I got another... I got the other one, because she didn't... They didn't have a joke about being wild college students drinking. They just kind of implied it. Here's what you say, ladies, next time. Hey, we're college students. Of course we drank. We couldn't get high. I mean, you know, you try to cop a bag of weed when you pull up to this dealers in a black expedition with three feds and dark glasses and earpieces. Prosecutors in the Kobe Bryant case dropped the charges yesterday because the victim refuses to testify. Here's what Kobe said. Although I truly believe this encounter between us was consensual, I recognize now that she did not and does not view this incident the same way I did. I now understand how she feels that she did not consent to this encounter. Okay. Would you like to talk about this political prisoner, Martyr, please? First of all, people don't even understand, man. This is serious business. This dude was told to say that as a condition of her dropping the charge. So it's not like people think, oh, he just admitted to raping her and it's just, please, he got, she got black man screw. I, how can I say this? How can I, I say, like wait, you're worried about offending people. No, wait, I'm just how saying, can I how, say can I, this nicely? how can I say black man screw? Look, look, white women are just not used to getting pummeled the way. <laughs> okay. No, no hair pulling, no, no ass found, slapping. See, ass Lori. Look, look, he's found look. a very non-offensive way to say it. Yes, it, yeah. ass yeah. Lance. She's never had. We we tease her all the time. Lance's one of the few pretty woman comics that hang around and and stay. We, we always tease her about how no one gets her and pulled and, and says, shut your stupid <laughs> fat mouth. And that's what Kobe did. And and that could be confused with rape, but it's not. So she, he, he. He cobatized. <laughs> he, he, he smashed he it. Cobatized it. And that's what that meant. It Lady, meant, hey, I've you, been raped. Shut up. I, I, I can't wait. Go ahead. First night in prison, bitch. I can't wait. <laughs> I think in, in a really retarded way, Patrice has a point. Because what? I... No, no, no. I, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. One, I don't, I don't think he raped her. I think it was probably, I, but, but I think it was because they, they know that she has some history and she had other semen on her. It wasn't like, just history. Who does it? Like, Afterwards, six hours exactly. later. Exactly. So maybe, she, I don't know, maybe she just wasn't used he to being asked. He came out He came out and said he real. <laughs> now you see, now you see how America. Shut up, stupid. Make it time. Time. Okay, okay. You he got a 20 minute mile on the front. Your son of Go ahead, ahead Tom. Uh, she, he went on in his apology, which cracked me up, uh, to say that he couldn't. Compensate. He couldn't understand the pain that she felt, and you know, if he shoved a pumpkin up his nostril, he might feel that. I think that's a that's a compliment I think to that your might voice. Be what happened though, because if you've never done it in the butt, then when you do, you might feel like, oh, I did something really dirty. I'm so glad I'm getting you feel that way. It's, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Enough of this nonsense and your nonsense too. It's not her. Shut up and let me. Can I say my opinion? Because you're afraid to let me talk. Because you no, know I know the real I'm, deal. This is, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Women's guilt. That's women's guilt when she's like, I, th I think that Look, she might I not have died. Shut up. I let me say 
What? Who? Why'd you just say you don't believe her? And I did say I don't believe her. She doesn't her. believe her. She said she didn't but get raped. But she see that tip tip that but told me what came out and said that he acknowledged he it. Didn't it didn't he didn't make the rule for her. He didn't say that. Let me so explain. when she was saying, no, no, please stop, she didn't mean no, it. Wait, Let me you explain. Know, see, you, uh, yeah. Can I please? It's your show, Colin. Sorry. Go ahead. Is it? Tom, yes. thank you. Yes. Can I please say something without being interrupted? All right. The bottom line is this. A, I, there will be no feminist outcry. Nobody's been told about this case because the guy's not white, so it doesn't fit into the profile that you need to attack in America. Shut your trap. I don't care. Point two. Point two. Uh, it was a culture clash where you brothers think, oh, well, you know, if I got this far, she'll easily take it up the butt. Not everybody's into that. Wait, 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 Let me just finish. Sarah, let me finish. It's a culture clash. Look at what I'm surrounded with. with. There's nobody even looked at to help me. It's the Colin. There's no way that I happened. I thought I was going to finish. Here's exactly what happened. He got up to her. She's freaking all pulling out the black dude. I'm in Colorado. I'll never get this chance again. She's like, it's me in Colorado. Well, can I please tell you what happened? Go ahead. Then halfway through, instead of being satisfied, like a white guy with a little oral sex and vaginal sex, you sons of bitches always want to take it up a notch and say, yeah, let me try and jam me in. And she's like, wait, wait, wait. Ah! And she starts playing. And that was... So I don't know if you call it rape or not. I'm sure that's But I'm just saying the way it was. That's that probably how it went down. Tell me that's not how it went down, that's fella. That's not how it went down. Well, listen, how it went down, she'll agree with this. When women think about having sex with somebody, right, they... They fantasize first of how shut up. Wow. They fantasize well, first I, on how he's gonna be in bed. Yes, and, and they then, like it violent sometimes. Right, we well, don't no, know no, that, no, 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 no. That he comes off like he's gonna make love and he just went wow on wow, that Colorado white coochie. She's a Colorado white girl. She's a New York white girl and never had sex with a black man. What's a Colorado white You're, girl gonna do? First of all, stupid, you didn't I'm invent spanking and pull a head, dumb dumb. Well, we made it we you all you got, like everything else. All you've got is your one natural gift. Leave it at that. You're not great in bed, but you do got the jammies. We'll give you that. All right. The only thing about this I don't like is your twist that a bunch of white girls like missionary style sex. Yes, we invite the promotion. That's not true. Some white guys are <laughs> We like to mix it up too. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Listen, it's very simple. I'll admit she didn't get raped if you'll admit that white guys are amazing in bed. Say it. Come on. Come on. Bring it. Come on. I knew you Some wouldn't, you hateful son of a bitch. Some white guys. A new... I just meant me. A new... <laughs> well, yeah. You. Funny, folks. Now, listen. Damn it. A new safety program in Vero Beach, Florida is underway to put video cameras, GPS units, that's global positioning systems. <laughs> and... <laughs> Fingerprint reading centers on school buses to keep track of students. Does anyone not like this idea? Fugus, you're very liberal. You probably hate this idea. Uh, I think it's really great that we're fingerprinting infants now. Yeah, I think it's a riot. Well, I mean, those infants are walking around blowing people's brains out, let's be honest. In Florida? What are you talking about? Florida is the biggest gun capital in the world. Tell me why in Harlem, tell me why strippers. in parts of Brooklyn, you've got to have a bake sale to buy textbooks post-Eisenhower era, but they can have CSI on a freaking school bus in Florida now. Because post-Eisenhower era is when all those horrible textbooks came out. Before that, those were good books. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> I don't know, do so you guys so you think, obviously, you just feel like it's bad? What's the it point? Sucks. Parents put kids on a bus to get away from them for a few but hours. But they are really giving some kids a nice beatdown lately on those videos they catch. That's hot. And they're not, like they're not infants. They're, I mean, I, I, think it, I think if it's, if it's their safety, like, then what's the problem? I think it keeps them safe. Grow a well, it doesn't. I'll tell you what, the kids, here's Grow the what does that mean? I mean, it's like growing that. like the guys have to fight their way on the bus. Thank you. Tell them what are you going to tell them. I'll tell you now, you what are we going to put barcodes on their, you know, tattoo them on their forehead, shove the GPS up their ass? Kids need... To, you know, they had to learn on their own, you know? Why you are they fingerprinting kids to get on a school bus? Yeah, what? Where's, where's the safety I think it's because that, Well, only because they're saying there's a lot of... I don't know. I didn't what? read the article. It's to make sure that oh, they're... The <laughs> exactly, but oh, exactly. His no, has to say I read about. the article. There's no reason No, why can't the brother speak? Look, Shut yeah, up. He never wrote Talk, a school bus. What's that? You only be mocking your uh, people's outrage over nothing? Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Hey. Our, our outrage <laughs> is different than white people's outrage. It's like, because white people feel like their kids are safe di from, each, from each other's kids. Which exactly. Wait a minute. What I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is black children, except for this one, when something 
out of the ordinary happens to a white kid. Like, he gets beat up in the back of a bus. Out of the ordinary? Well, that's out, out, out of the ordinary. That's out of the ordinary for, for an mouth. average white kid really? to get beat up in the back of a school kid bus. And, through and through soon as some little white, white kid, person through 18. as soon as some white kid gets beat up, then we then we talk about GPS. I used to get beat up every day. I know people got stabbed every other day. So did I. Where was the goddamn GPS? Stop trying to relate to me. I'm talking about the other white people, Colin. Not the not the Colin that's from Brooklyn, and you try to relate to both people. I'm talking about like John. He's a he's a white guy. I'm very and, white. And, yeah. and Tom is a white guy. No, no, no. You're not. You're, you're, you're relating. I'm white. You're relating to each other in color. You're not relating to, to each other in, 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 in relation to how you grow up. Tom's a white dude. He's a white dude. So I'm GPS so white. seems Albinos like call me it's outrageous. <laughs> Time, the only time white people get really scared for their children is, is the Amber Alert thing, the kidnapping and all that stuff. They're not afraid of other white kids doing things to their that children. That was a long That's way you. of saying absolutely nothing, and I enjoyed I'm it. I'm go. telling you. <laughs> if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have cameras on a bus, I got no problem with that. You know, with your kid getting smacked in the head with a baseball bat, God bless you. But the fingerprinting people, it's a little bit creepy. They're fingerprinting children going on buses now. Why, 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 is that, why is that for creepy? For your safety. Why is that more creepy than cameras? What are they doing? They're smuggling kids to school? What the hell is the conflict? Kids are getting abducted. That's it. But if you get on the wrong getting bus... Getting abducted off. So fingerprinting is going to keep some kid from getting abducted? Yeah. When I was a kid, you'd get frisked getting on... And the guy would give you a piggy front rides right after that. It was ugly. And then he had his own special <laughs> fingerprinting. <laughs> and they got to the same pastor, actually. If they had fingerprinted some of those police, I wouldn't be standing here today. Oh. But Nothing? <laughs> oh, damn it. it. Folks, you know what it is? I set the bar too high. They want to make a <laughs> joke. The crowd's like, nah, Kyle, you're better than that. No, no, Thanks, no. folks. <laughs> well, listen, we let's talk about Krispy Kremes. Oh. That's what it is, John. Anyway, I set the bar safety. high over. Childhood safety. Childhood safety. Right Whoa, there, man. Krispy Kremes in Palm Beach County <laughs> are offering far. free donuts for every kid that gets an A on their report cards. So, of course, people are outraged because needs. they're fat. The people are going to be fat in this country. First of all, what are you supposed to do? Pretend to be poor like every other country that's an insult to their real star base. No, I think it's great we're producing more fat nerds. I think it's great. But when this is like Krispy <laughs> Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts are cocaine, okay? Krispy Kremes are crack. And They're this is how are. you get the kids hooked early. You give them a taste right away. This whole audience is pissed at me right now because I'm a delicious Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <laughs> like Krispy Kremes are going to punch me for having this Krispy Kremes killed Elvis. I mean, like, you got to keep no, on getting no, no. New, new addicts all the time. <laughs> But don't you think we live in a country where and nobody ever says, what's the big deal? Like this Krispy Kreme thing, let it ride. Who gives a damn? But they have to have a protest. They do all the time. Everything Black stinks. people do all the time. I don't care if they do it. It's all, do all my the personal time. amusement. Everybody. I think a bunch of fat little ace students running around Florida is a laugh riot as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, then they don't have to have the GPS on them anymore. Just exactly right. You can follow, see them the, face. follow the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> but who are they to commend A students when they can't even spell Krispy Kreme? There's no K. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Lynn, what do you think? That was a good one, Tom. Thank you very much. Lynn, let me ask you this. And Lynn, you used to be heavy, and don't bring up that I know what it feels like, because I used to be... What? You used to be... I cannot kinda... believe you said that. <laughs> Lynn was a fat one. She used to be a fat one. Lynn, Lynn used to clock in at about 2.40. <laughs> so listen. Lynn was a... <laughs> well, you look gorgeous. <laughs> You look gorgeous. Look What's... at you with the Krispy Kreme juice all over your I mouth. I know I was saying a fat that bastard. You said it to me. But you I should not be happy. Say it like that. I'm, so, I'm so surprised that she never been with a black guy. She used to be a big, fat, white woman, man. And still, and still, <laughs> and still, <laughs> still has <laughs> never, ever. It is amazing. Has never been with a black dude. Because the the eating the donut. They don't these care. black dudes now, the young ones, they don't even like the big girls anymore. They like the skinny Jada Pinkett types. Mexicans, they're the only ones that really do appreciate me. <laughs> you guys have changed. There was a yeah, whole TLC look. We changed it. Yeah. We like the way you clutch that pool. We'll be right back. Back. <laughs> Comedians spend half their time on stage talking about men and women. And some of them will actually bring armpits into the discussion, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. <laughs> Tonight, Nick DiPaolo and Lynn Coplitz are going head-to-head -head in a competition called How Well Do You Know the Opposite Sex? First, we're testing the men. Lynn knows the answers to this question, so Nick's going to guess. Okay, what three qualities do women look for most in a man? Nick, you got 15 seconds. <laughs> I saw her at Bed Bath & Beyond with a uh, rabbi. Oh, wait a minute, Nick. 
Hold on, folks. Okay, Nick. I'm sorry. Nick's getting mad. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to blow out the roof. Okay, Nick, what do you think of the three qualities most women look for in a man? They look for confidence, sense of humor, and a penis thicker than Hillary Clinton's ankles. <laughs> All right, Lynn. Lynn, what's the correct answer? Okay, uh, I said an old geezer with a lot of money and no next of kin. I got relatives, but go on. <laughs> Oxygen tank and fatal allergies. <laughs> <laughs> She's not playing games, Blake. Right. Serious. So far, that's no points, I guess. Nick, you got zero points. Now it's the women's turn. The, the big penis point. was good. The big penis was good. The thick penis? Yeah. Uh, so give him a point for the no, thick penis. I, have, I didn't have money. You're right. No, no you're you right. Thick penis. All right. No, I get... It's too late. I already gave the point. We can't mess around with this board. It's serious. <laughs> um, a lot of technology. Yeah, I can Now tell. it's the woman's turn. My Nick knows the answers. Lynn's going to guess. All right. What three things can a woman do to make her man happy? Happy? Happy. <laughs> Happy? 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 This is kind of a swinging tune, don't you think? Nick, please, your answers, you're showing her the answers if you want to look over. Right. Hey, okay. You know, I know it's a comedy show, but that. cheating doesn't help. <laughs> All right, Lynn, what three things can a woman do to make her man happy? Um, knock out her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? I should. Oh, I get it. Um, move, like, out of the country, because men love space. Yes. And, um, oh, I messed that up. Um, oh. hold on. And don't <laughs> eat, because guys hate fat chicks. Um, if you're going to eat anything, just eat, like, your feelings, because <laughs> the only thing guys hate more than fat chicks are fat chicks who like to talk. <laughs> Nick, I know you agree with those. What would you say? Uh, perform oral sex on him, make him a sloppy Joe, and shut the f*** up. Okay. Two. That's two. Two boys. Didn't you mean shut the fudge up? Yeah, fudge up. <laughs> Lynn, you got two. Two to one. Uh, on to the final round. I have the correct answer to this question. Right here. Um, what's the best way to spend a Saturday night? I guess two or she got two. She's got I two. I got two. Okay. He's scary even on a show, you know? You're like, oh, women, uh, women are women. Jesus. I, go ahead. Oh, shut up. Ready? Go ahead. What is it? What's the best way to spend a Saturday night? That's very violent. It's not violent, but we did rehearse this goddamn thing, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> hey! Uh, all right. The best way to spend a Saturday night is Lynn. Okay, I'm giving up on men, so mine's with a hungry dog and peanut butter. Whoa! <laughs> Nick! I, I had the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> In a hot tub with two hookers at the Bellagio, recovering from what you did with five hookers at the MGM Grand on Friday night. All right. Well, actually, you're both wrong. The best way to spend a Saturday night is getting <laughs> while reading the Crate and Barrel catalog, while watching a Kung Fu Nora Ephron movie, and lying about what you really want from, from the other person, then falling into torture and loathing sleep while she sobs next to you. <laughs> and on that note, let's take a look at the final score. Men won, women two. We'll be right back. You won. You won. No, men won, women two. How are we doing well that you couldn't accept my answer? God, Think about that. I mess with men all the time. Folks! Two real romantics who met in Walmart loved the store so much they decided to do their <laughs> wedding there. If you were to get married in a place that means a lot to you, where would it be and describe the ceremony? Patrice O'Neill. I get married at uh, one of those ultimate fighting cages at, during a match. I'll have Frank Shanrock as my best man, and every time I get ready to say I do, Frank would choke me unconscious for, <laughs> for being stupid enough to get married. And if, and if my fiancé tries to wake me up, his brother Ken will come flying knee kicker right in the side of the temple, and we'll both spend our honeymoon in a coma. All right. Tom Cutter. Well, I already had my perfect wedding. It was the one my wife planned for us. <laughs> okay, enough of that crap. My ultimate wedding would be a Rastafarian service held in Fenway Park. My bride would be a dwarf mutant infomaniac gymnast with a trust fund, and all my groomsmen would have Down syndrome so that I look particularly fetching on my special day. <laughs> okay. 
John Fuglesang. First off, I love the Walmart story. It's the first time they've ever allowed a union in a Walmart. But <laughs> I would love to good. get married right here in New York City tonight at the Republican National Convention. Because these wonderful people that go to the convention seem to enjoy watching grown men make promises they don't intend yeah. to ever keep. <laughs> The bridal party can knock back some 40s with my girl Jenna. Laura can give my mom some extra Xanax. And it'll be a great reception until the cops find out that our Michael Moore pinata is actually Michael Moore. <laughs> okay. Lynn Couplets. Well, I would get married at an ex-boyfriend's house. We'd consummate the ceremony on his bed. Huh. And then we would leave him to sleep in our wet spot. And then I would walk out the next morning screaming, Who's crazy now, mother <laughs> the show, folks. Good night. Uh, tonight, uh, you said that being fat in this country is good for other countries to see. What exactly did you mean by that? Well, I'm just saying that people saying, oh, we're such a fat nation of excess. If we have all the food and we don't eat it, it goes bad. All the other countries are like, you bastards, we're skinny because we have to be. You can be fat, try to be, enjoy it. <laughs> it's like in the old days, people admired the cat.